Shalom of Rocha, Brucham al Boim, to the Shamas Agodo Drosha, the pre Shamas Agodo, Shamas Agodo Drosha, Shnas Tav Shin Pei. I want to thank Me Umka Deliba, Me Kol Halev, and from the depths of my heart, to take a moment to thank the wonderful Shechter family, Mrs. Shoshana Shechter, her children, her grandchildren, sponsoring the Shamas Agodo Drosha, in memory of their dear husband, father, and grandfather. Hazeich Nishmas, Le'iloi Nishmas, Rav Shol Yaakov Ben Tzvi Meir, Olav Shalo. Our dear and beloved Rav Shelly, Rav Shelly Shechter, any time I mention his name, any time I think of him, the first image that always appears in my mind is that of a smiley, is that of a happy Rav Shelly. But he wasn't just somebody who lived with a gavaldika, miyuchadika, simcha sachaim. He's someone who gave simcha to others. He's someone who lived to give simcha to so many. Belevu benefesh. He and his eishes chayot, tibodu lachaim, told the shalom. They've done so much for the shul, for the community, for Klai Yisrael. We know he had a ticket straight to Olam Haba, Tainis Chavbeis, Amin Aleph, as Rabruka heard from Elio Novi when he met up with Anosh and Bashuk, and he says, Tell me, Elio, inform me that you have a VIP pass to Olam Haba. And they said, Inchi Bedichi, Anon, Umevanchen Achiru, where Anosh and Smechim. And we make other people happy, Umevanchen Atsivi, we pick up people's spirits. That's what Shelley was through and through. We hope that the Divrei Taira this evening should contribute to the continuous Aliyah and Neshama of our dear Rabbi Shelley and Gan Eden and Shammai Lamei Choy We're in the midst of a crisis. We're in the midst of something that certainly hasn't happened in our lifetimes, a pandemic, tragic proportions, Rachman al-Atzlan, Petira after Petira, a day doesn't go by, calamities, tragedies, predicaments, ordeals, Yisur and Sar, Agmas Nefesh, you name it, Abishter, we cry out to you on a day-to-day -day basis, Dailat Saraseinu. We can't even look anymore to Yeshiva World News at Amatsa.com. We can't pay attention to the radio, to the news reports. How much could we bear? How much could we be so well? How much could we tolerate? Higi Asman, that's it. Mashiach Tzitkeno has to be coming. And indeed, there are a lot of good things that have come out of this crisis. As a journalist, an Irish journalist by the name of Kalodag Mukumiski. She writes that her former career working in disaster zones has prepared her for situations of challenge and uncertainty. And she shares with us the following. This is what I learned during my time as an aid worker. When you see the worst in life, you often see the very best in people. I saw that then and I see it now. As a society, we are social, social distancing, she continues. But strangely, we are also more connected. And it's all because of this harrowing crisis. How many families are spending far more quality time than they ever thought imaginable? How many spouses are spending quality conversations that perhaps they never had time allotted for? Quoting from a friend, she writes, it is making people sit up and pay attention that this world we live in is so fragile. It is getting people that usually have their heads stuck in their iPhones to realize the reality around them is not one big cyber game. These terrible days made me realize the importance of actually talking to someone, hearing their voices rather than just skimming through some texts. It's like we renewed the vows of our friendship, and I love it. And she closes by quoting yet another friend with the following words. What's taking place now in our society and the world at large is a story of man and nature. 
In this age of technology, we were moving so fast that we forgot our role. And now we need to rethink how we operate. We are the horse, but God holds the reins. We mentioned this morning in a shear, a fascinating medrash in the Yalkut Shimoni on Shira Shirim. And the medrash is on Shira Shirim in Remes Tov Tov Kupay Vov. And just to quote a succinct line by Ramchia Barabba and Alostri Yistano, Amar Ramchia Barabba, Simon the Mosa Mashiach, Kla Yisrael, you want a Simon, you want a sign that we're holding by Yemosa Mashiach, that the Mashiach's arrival is indeed imminent. I continue, Zorchia Barabba, Dever Godo Ba. When you see a Dever Godo, not Stama pestilence, not Stama Magaifa, not Stama plague. When you see a Dever Godo that overtakes and overwhelms society at large. When you see God's clear, omnipotent hand working and manipulating nature at will, highlighting and reinforcing his omnipotence, his omniscience through and through. Never go to Boliolam, you know, Mashiach's right around the corner. Mentioned as well, Tosefta and Mesechus Tainus and Perak Bays at the end of Tosefta Yedalif. Tosefta writes that when it comes to Yemosa Mashiach, there will be a Mabu. A flood of devour that will come to the Umar Sa'olam, that will come to the nations of the world. Not Stama Dever, echoing the sentiment of the Yaka Shimoni, that it's a Dever Godo, this is a Mabul Shal Dever, not a Mabul of Mayim, that opinion posits. It'll be rather a deluge, will be inundated by a Dever that takes over the entirety of the world. That's what we're experiencing. Klai Yisrael, Higi Asman Le'orer, Mashiach's coming. Atainis, Tosefta, Bezian Aleph, and there's so many other Rishonim, Rabbans and Rashi's on Tehillim that the world has been sending out, disseminating, bandied about all the Jewish websites. So many Simonim, Giluyim, Hashem is telling us, Klaus will give us man to wake up because Mashiach's around the corner. Harav Yisrael may have drew a close Talmud and a Chavrusa of Agon Rav Chaim Kenevsky, the Sarah Torah, the Golden Hador. He visited Hagon Rav Chaim Kineski to his home last week and he invited the Rav to his home near Shalayim on Cholomoy Pesach. A visit that Hagon Rav Chaim customarily makes twice a year. Once on Sukkot and once on the Yant of Pesach. In the midst of a visit to Shalayim to Davin by the Kosal Hamaravi. Of course, Rav Juk prefaced his imitation by saying that due to the current coronavirus crisis, Rav Chaim may not be able to travel to Yishalayim or Akadosh this year. And who knows if the Kotel, the Kosal Maravi, is even going to be open this year, Cholmoyed Pesach. And in response, Rav Chaim, the Golda Hador, tearfully said, I hope that by Cholmoyed, Mashiach will have already arrived. And Rav Juk answered, Amen. Family members in the room at the time said that Rechaim Kinevsky became extremely emotional in the midst of such a conversation. See, yes, in a sense, a lot of us become bigger and better people. But unfortunately, many amongst us are breaking down. Many amongst us are filled continuously, incessantly, with Agmas Nefesh, with Tsar, with Evo Viyogo. Petiris are surrounding us, Rachman Litzlan. People quarantined, sequestered, isolated in their homes. They want to go out, they want to venture out. The financial fiasco, look at the calamity, look at the plummeting. Stock prices, look what's happening to financial markets worldwide. Rachman Litzlan, unemployment numbers, people forecasting them, I reach as high as 30%. So many, hey, look at you, already out of jobs. Hey, Mr. So what do you want from us? So many, yes, there are a lot of good things emerging from this crisis. We have close family connections. We're helping out others. But let's face it, the fact remains that so many of us 
a breaking down within. So I'd like to share with you an email that I received. So let's start with an email that came my way today. It was a brief text message sent to the world by God. And God announces to the world, now that I've cleared up your schedule, it's time to talk. Now that I've cleared your schedule, you, there's not too much to do. No ball games, no Major League Baseball, no NHL hockey, no NBA, no Broadway shows, no uh, movies outdoors, no congregating, no socializing. Fuck care on the contrary. We mandated social distancing. We don't have the same chabura. People, you can't go out to the places, no Pesach hotels. See, so God says, I've cleared up your schedule. It's time to have a conversation. It's finally time to sit down and to talk to the Rebona Shalom. So I want to share with you a conversation between somebody and God. And the individual writes that he turns to God, to a Kodesh Ruch, and he says, Hey God! And God says, Hello? The individual continues, God, I'm falling apart. I can't take this crisis anymore. On my sanity, I'm losing it. God, I'm thinking, like, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. What should I do? Can you please put me back together again? And God says, I would rather not. Why? Because you aren't a puzzle. But God, what about all the pieces of my life that are falling apart, that are falling to the ground? God says, let them stay there for a while. They fell off for a reason. Take some time and decide if you need any of those pieces back. But God, you don't understand. I'm falling apart. I'm breaking down. And God says, no, you don't understand. You're not breaking down. You're breaking through. What you are feeling are just growing pains. You're shedding the things and the people in your life that are holding you back. You aren't falling apart. You're falling into place. Relax. Take some deep breaths and allow those things you don't need anymore to fall off of you. Quit holding on to the pieces that don't fit you anymore. Let them fall off. Just let them go. Once I start doing that, God, what will be left of me? Only the very best pieces of you. But God, I'm scared of changing. I keep telling you, God says, you aren't changing. You are becoming. Becoming who, God? Becoming who I created you to be. A person of light and love and charity and hope and courage and joy and mercy and grace and compassion. I made you for more than the shallow pieces you have decided to adorn yourself with that you cling to with such greed and fear. Let those things fall off of you. I love you. Don't change. Become, become, become. Become the person. Become the year that I made you that I so wanted you to be. I'm going to keep telling you this until you remember it. But God, there goes another piece of me. I can't deal with this anymore. I can't be so well. I can't tolerate the crisis, the anxiety, the apprehension. God says, don't worry. Let it be. Take it one day at a time. See, you mean, God, I'm not broken. No. You're breaking like the dawn. It's a new day. Become. Become the person you're supposed to be. Client soul, this is a time of rebirth. It's a time, Klai Yisrael, we have to prepare in the midst of this crisis. Don't wait until it's over and Be'ez HaShem Yisbroch should end mighty quickly. This is a time we have to ruminate, we have to contemplate. What's going to be post-corona? Higi Asman, right here and right now. To make sure that we have the preparations in place to press that restart button when this crisis leaves us behind. This is a time, Klai so we have to think of rebirth because after a corona crisis, after Hashem Yisbaruch has turned this world upside down, Olam Hofa Chreisi, you cannot emerge the same person. This crisis, this predicament must compel each and every one of us to become another person in Ash Ish Acher. I have to emerge a Bri Chadosh. I have to undergo a metaphorical rebirth. I can't be the same person post corona that I was pre corona. To quote one poet, 
The tragedy of pain is that we overlook its aim of leaving us humble and wise. Oh, how shallow of man to wallow in misery, not to realize that gold so pure as in fire proved, and oil from olive by crushing removed, and is so with all things of worth. So differ from the rest, be strong in life's test, and make of ordeal rebirth. Differ from the rest. Be strong, Klai Yisrael, in life's test. Be ever strong, Klai Yisrael, in this test of a corona and Isaiah. And make of your ordeal, make of our ordeal, rebirth. Emerge a different person. Emerge a better person. So how do we do that? First thing I believe humbly that we need to work on is that we have to take things one day at a time to keep plugging for Dvaitar, to keep going through with what being Machasik and our Amunah Bitochan. Bochavokuk Vamidan Alachas and Chavokuk in the Treyasar Perk Base Posik Dalin. All 613 mitzvahs are predicated on Mavusa, Samyusa, on what? On the Yisod, the fundamental, in Yiddishkeit of Amuna, of Amuna Bahashem. Tzadik Bemunosha Yechia lives with his Amuna. Makis Chavdal and Amunalev. The end of the Mesechta relates that all the 613, it can all be boiled down to one Yisod, to one rock solid foundation. And that's that of Amuna, Tzadik lives with his Amuna. You know what's going to get us through to the other side of this Nisayan to see the light at the end of the tunnel? It's going to be Amuna Bahasha. We have to always be machazik that Amuna and that Bitocha. If Yetzias Mitzrayim, as the Nevi'ah make quite clear, continuously invoking that metaphor of a Leda Chadosha, of a Bria Chadosha, we came out of Mitzrayim. We were not the same people. We went through the crucible of a Golas, of a long, harsh, and bitter Golas, subjected to the oppressive and abject slavery. The torture based in the land of ancient Egypt, we come out in the night of Yetzias Mitzrayim. And it's a rebirth, it's a renewal. It's a new start. That was a restart. How we come out and the Medrash Rabbah says that one of the primary reasons, the schus that we had to get out, was Amuna. Who got out? Those who possessed Amuna Masha. And then we made our way to the threshold of Yamsuf. And the Mitzrum or Harun our tail, the Sheshmi Yosrecha Bachur. And we got to the Yam and we had this formidable sea in front of us. We had the quite indignant Egyptians, so close behind us. And Klaisol says, Moshe, something, we need help. And writes the Torah Kedosh, the first posseg of the third Ali in Meshallah. Vayom Hashem, Moshe, Matitzak, Eli, what are you doing davening to me? Dabur Abedei Yisrael, Vayisrael. Speak to Klaisol and tell them what? Go forward, just march onward. Ask the Archaim HaKadosh, what in the world? Is God relating to Moshe? Moshe, tell them Matitzak, don't daven to me. What do we mean don't daven? Me and my mock and cross, Yich Hashem, bending about, say for Tehillim. Dabur Abedei's magnum opus is Tfila, Tfila, Tfila. And that's what we do. We cry out from the depths of our hearts. We say, Hashem, we plead, we beseech, we give you our supplications. Please rescue us. Save us, God. Have compassion and mercy. And here God says, Matitzakala, you know what? I don't want your tefillahs. I don't want you to daven to me. I want you to tell Chai so Moshe Rabbeinu, my Evan Ammon, just turn around, speak to them, and tell them, be so, and march onward. Ask them, where are you going to go? The Yad didn't split yet. Explains the Hale Gorachayim, such a sowed when it comes to difficult times in life. Writes the Hale Gorachayim that if you're not Kufa and Isman of Midas Sadin and you want to arouse the Hiskabrus of the Midas Arachimim of the Abishur, you want to trigger, you want to engender that unbelievable mercy, that compassion. You want God to rescue you, to commiserate, to empathize. You want Him to be with you. There are times in life, in our history, that you know what? Even Tefillah is not going to cut it. Even Tefillah is not going to work. But you know what's going to work? Strengthening your Amunah Bitochon. If you have that Amunah Bitochon, 
Right to Rechaim HaKodesh, Godol HaBitoch and the Amuna, Lachri and the Taifa. You know when Hashem Yisparach wanted to see? Dabro B'nai Yisrael V'Yisrael just told them to march onward. Aye, but the Yam didn't split yet. It doesn't matter. That's what I want to see. Trust me. Just take it one day at a time, one step at a time. March onward for fighter. Just keep going. Just keep pushing. Don't look back. Just go onward. Kai, so I'll keep pushing one day at a time with the Amun knowing that if Hashem brought us to this, Hashem is absolutely going to carry us through this. We mentioned in the past Tim Tebow, when Tim Tebow was saying, I, what's my future going to be? He says, I don't know what my future holds in store, but I sure do know who holds my future. Just do what God tells you to do. Just keep marching onward. And God's going to carry us through this, my dear beloved Klai Yisrael. Yedidai v'yahuvai, just hold on tight. Tzadik b'manosha yichya, strengthen yourselves in the mood to be tochel like never before. And stop worrying about all the anxiety and all the apprehension and all the fear. Just hold on to that Yaakov chevanochel. Also, we have that spiritual attachment to the Almighty above. Hold on to that spiritual metaphysical rope and know that God's holding on to you. Let him carry you through this turbulent sea to the other side as he did to Klaisol by Kriyas Yamsov. I mentioned in the past an interesting story of a beautiful Yid from B'nai Brak who was in my office years back. And he says, Rabbi Fine, I want to share with you the following. He says, you see, years ago, my wife and I had a child, and the child came out, a dwarf, tiny little girl, and my wife and I couldn't stop crying from the moment of her birth. And as she got older and as she started to mature and develop, we were crying, saying that besides the bullying, how is she ever going to get married? She's not going to find anyone. No one's going to marry her. And she's no way. She's never going to build a family. We're going to have to have her in a home the rest of our lives. And my wife and I, Rabbi Fina, we couldn't stop crying. And as our daughter matured, she says, Abba and Ima, what are you so worried about? I know that Hashem Yitbarach, He's carrying me. If this is how Hashem made me, this is the Uman, how He fashioned this clean, this precious little girl, Leah. If this is how Hashem made me, He's going to carry me through. And she says, Abba and Ima, you know, I know that life's going to be okay. Because Chazal tell us, the Gemara, so to Lamadzayin and Alf and Hashem and Minadav, he jumps in. Chazal say that the water split when it got up to your nose and you can no longer breathe. And this young girl Leah from an Brock turns to her Abba and Ima as a young teenage girl, and she says, "Ani bat I am confident I'm going to get married one day. Hashem made me a dwarf, but I know that it's going to work out. Why? Because had I been together with my ancestors, Mishas Yitzias Mitzrayim, had I been there by Yamsuf, I would have been habalat habitachon achigadomi kulam achigadolam kulam. I would have been number one. Why? Because this little Leah said, because Hashem made me a dwarf, I would have gone into Yamsuf, and my nose would have reached the level of water before everybody else. It would have been up to their knees, but by me, it already would have been covering my face, and I still would have marched onward. I still would have been so mech and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So I know that Hashem carried me through. Had I been by Yamsuf, he would have carried me. I know he's going to carry me through. And the father came with tears in his eyes to tell me, Rabbi Feiner, my daughter Leah got married. Baruch Hashem, she's happy living in Eretz soul today. Amun Abitachem, Fort Viter, Dabro B'nai Yisov, Yisov, my dear Klai Yisov, just keep plugging onward. Just keep pushing forward. Just take it one day at a time. Turbulent, raging waters, the sea of all the crises now taking place, of all the predicaments, the ordeals, the suffering, the loneliness, the solitude. Just keep plugging Fort Viter one day at a time. Okay, so we hold on. I'm going to be talking. We make it out to the other side. Okay, that's it. Finally, we get to the other side. Everything's going to be great. After all, you saw a vision of God by Yamsuf Zikhili Viadveu. And the Mechil to write to Mishalach Rosso Shivcha Alayam. Mashalo Roy Yecheska Mabuzi Yisharnavim. That means everybody, even the lowly mates are in. Everybody witnessed the experience, the vision of godliness. They encountered a rendezvous with the divine like never before in history. Zekeli van Veyu. 
But yet writes the Mirror Shashiva Rachaim Shulovitz in the Sichas Musar. If Klai so changed by all that a transpired at Yamsuf, then why would Chazal still refer to the lowly maidservant as just that? As a shivcha alayam. Explains Reb Chaim Shmulevitz because you can have miracles and you can have upheavals in life and you can have turned the world upside down and you can see God. Who doesn't see God today? Who doesn't see God? A Deborah Baliola, how could you not wake up and smell the coffee? How do you not see an invisible microscopic little bug? What did God need to bring Tita Sarosha down and get them in front of the base? What did he need? A little Yitosh. A little gnat, a tiny minuscule mosquito. He brings down Yitosh. Tito says, God, let's do one. God says, I don't need a mosquito this time around. I don't need a little gnat. I'm going to take a microscopic bug. A little minuscule, invisible to the naked eye virus. And I'm going to promulgate it worldwide. And I'm going to show you who is the Melach Malchim Malachim. I could shut down the world, the financial systems, the travel. I could shut down all of society and lock you in your homes. Because God alone is the Kodesh Baruch Hu, is the Melech Malchai HaMalochi. Kodesh Baruch Hu says, I'm in charge. We see God, it's Kayla, we can point and see in the midst of a COVID-19 crisis. Zekeli, I see God, he's acting, he's acting out. Kaviyochol, I see him on Deus, so let's glorify him. Right, but what's going to happen post-corona? Are we going to be like the Mirosh Hashim is telling us that the Shivcha, she didn't change. She was Zoha, she merited such a giloy of the divine. God revealed himself to the Jewish people like never before. And yet what? So many in Klai Yisrael still say, stayed the same people. They maintained their status quo. They remain the same individual that they were pre Kriyas Yamsev. How could that be? Because miracles don't last very long. Because the hashba is not going to last unless we take those messages, we take them to heart, and we allow it to penetrate into the inner chambers and recesses of our heart and of our soul. Unless we work on it, unless we take concrete actions, we can't live in the world of theory. Oh, it's very nice. Oh, what's going to be post Yeah, I'll be a better Jew. Stop with the theory. I want to know right here, right now. Concrete actions. We got to go fight her. We got to build. But we can't be the same people. We saw God in the midst of an unparalleled Shoah, genocide, a holocaust. And there were Yidin who gave up their faith, but yet there were so many Yidin who reinforced and strengthened their faith like never before. Klai Yisrael, this is our, not Chalila, and I can't compare anything to a holocaust, Chalila. This is a crisis we've never tasted, we've never seen, we've never experienced until now. We gotta plug onward, we gotta keep moving forward. But we gotta change in the process. It's a great book, it came out two years ago by Ariel Berger called The Witness. Lessons from Eli, Eli Wiesel's Classroom. It was a National Jewish Book Awards winner. And Elie Wiesel told his class that I must tell you, even there in the camps, I saw kindness and goodness. I saw people encourage one another with words they could barely speak. I saw people pray in spite of what to many was God's absence. I saw a father give his son his last piece of bread, and I saw the son give it right back to the father. Prisoners tried to protect those who were weaker or too sick to work from the guards. That was the defeat of the enemy. The enemy tried to dehumanize us, but succeeded only in dehumanizing himself. And in 1945, Jews came out of ghettos and forests. The partisans had guns. They could have set the whole world on fire. They could have put Europe in flames. But it didn't happen. With very few exceptions, they did not seek revenge. They sought victory through life. Survivors as a group have advocated hope, not despair, generosity, not bitterness, gratitude, and not violence. They chose to have families to rebuild decimated communities, to become philanth philanthropists and doctors to find a way to help others. So 
so many people became heroes in the midst of the Holocaust. And in the aftermath of the Holocaust, some people lost their faith and some people 